good afternoon to everybody how you doing guys in this episode we're working on this 2019 Honda Grace and we have it this is actually I think it's a, just a recovery video so as you can see bad news this vehicle was kind of like flooded and well what we're gonna do is we're gonna fully take apart the battery and see what we can save from it so we will continue then all right guys so as i was explained you can see we have the junction block over here but what really hurts is this unit over here. This is the battery management unit. And as I said, I'm pretty sure this is just a re recovery video. That's the box where the battery was. So anyway, let's just continue this assembling and we'll continue then. All right, I, know, I know it's not the best background, so I'm just finished to take apart everything look at the look at the fan the cooling fan yep the water penetrating motor sadly the management unit totally flooded and then the junction block that level of current going over there flooded provokes all this oxidation so yeah, the electronics, especially these connections were all super corroded. We're talking about just a couple of days and this was flooded. All right, so let's take a look at the cells. And here we have the unit. See, the unit is not so big because this is lithium ion. So. going to oh yes oh. what we're gonna do is just we're gonna open and measure the voltage on it anyway we will continue then just finish over here yeah well this is sad anyway <laughs> all right we'll continue let me just measure the current the voltage see if we got some voltage over here and Basically, that's it. Oh, let me know before we continue over here. Yes. Here we got the DC to DC. Totally toast. <laughs> totally toast. Look at the cable all corroded over there. Oh. As I said, this was just a recovery video. See that over there? Yeah. Okay, so this is this one is the inverter with the converter. They're separate parts, but they go together right on the top of the battery. Apparently the inverter didn't suffer anything, but the DC to DC converter, that is that is gone. All right, let's continue then. All right, so, Let's just make a quick review of what's going on over here. And um, so we got the block number one, block number two, block number three, three, and we finally took apart block number four over here. But the block number four, we fully took it apart, uh, basically because I wanted to check the individual voltage of the cells, all right? So these cells are supposed to be uh, almost like 40 volts, 43 volts, 42 volts. But uh, if it, I just measure the voltage, and the voltage is about zero. <laughs> because as you can see over here, take a look at the mark. All right, that means water got to this level, right, as you can see. And of course, it completely uh, short circuit the battery. So because of that, the battery fully discharged and bye bye. So I just took up the frame, the battery, 
and as you can see I can, can see the individual mold, the, the cells but sadly we cannot take it apart because these cells um, these cells are welded together they are welded in series as you can see them so you can disassemble the cells from, from this unit so if you want to buy this unit you need to buy the whole block all right <laughs> so we will continue then so we can say that all these cells are the very same all right they're just going in just one exactly position positive positive negative positive negative over here and finally positive over here but the very reason I wanted to show you this uh, fully disassembled it's remember that in one of our previous video I recommend that you should service these vehicles at least um, probably once a year two years depending on how clean you keep your compartment and the main reason is because of this cover that goes on here on the top so remember the the air has been sucked into the cells from the top of the battery. That means that all the dirt, everything, all type of debris gets accumulated right here without any type of field. That goes right down to these, all these gaps. Then comes, passes through this chamber and then comes up directly into the um, inverter with converter assembly. So, um, just a moment, a second. And the only sad thing is that you need to disassemble the whole frame just to take this cover out. So we're gonna put it back and we're gonna start assembling the battery. So we'll continue then. So once we finish to assemble all both side frames, they are adjusted by eight nuts between them. We just finished to assemble the junction block. The junction block, the main fuse, instead, instead of being like other vehicles in the uh, safety plug, it's just directly connected in the junction block. And we have over here our main contactors, the pre-charge resistor and the pre-charge contactor. And this is the fuse for the air conditioning system. This passage over here, this is our current sensor. Basically, this is the composition of the all components of the junction block in these Honda vehicles. They're basically all the same. So we'll continue. Oh wait, uh, one other thing I wanted to show you before we continue is that we should understand how this level of oxidation comes over here because once once you short the battery, a high level of electricity flow in the water oxidizes the metal metal right away. Of course, we know that this battery is not gonna work anymore, but at least for school purposes, it will work. So now we'll continue then. Okay, we can say the frame is fully assembled. We can say the junction block is already assembled. Now the other big part we're going to assemble is this big unit over here, which it wasn't really necessary to take apart. We have over here the inverter and the converter assembly. So this will be practically the inverter. Here is just a capacitor with the IGBTs inside. And the, this one is the DC to DC converter, which remember it receives DC voltage control and delivers 14 volts to the system. This, you could say that, as I said this before, this is the substitution for the alternator. Hey, good morning. Okay, so. How this, how this goes, you remember that the air enters to the top of the chamber, travels into the cells, comes into the lowest air chamber, and then comes up, enters to this hole, and this is finally the outlet. And this is how it really goes. There it is. That's how it goes. So all the power electronics is just Pass through here. Got some bus bars connected over here. The the three phase outlet. And uh, well, basically, the, and this is the 12 volt outlet. But the 12 volt outlet doesn't have any connection to this. It just goes directly 
into the DC to DC with a special bent boss bar that goes, it's a long boss bar, which we'll be seeing in just a moment. So we'll continue then. So this is our special bent boss bar, which we are going to <laughs> come inside right here. This position, just a moment. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There it is. So this is how it goes. I'm sorry, it's because I'm working with just one hand. That's it. Directly from the outlet of the DC to DC through this corner corner mounting in the inverter, then goes out directly to the 12 volt system. So we'll continue then. So here we are, so now we are going to assemble all the uh, wire le electronics. It's just a big, just one big unit that goes all, over, all the way around the battery itself. And this is it. So let's just see so if we can give it a quick assembling over here. Give me a second. Yep, this is how it goes. Right. Like this. There it is. That's it. And we'll continue then. I'm sorry guys. So one thing I forgot to mention is that before assembling the wire electronics, we need to assemble the safety plug connector right. Just a moment, just a second. Remember working just with one hand. This is how I go. We'll just put the nuts over here, assemble it, and then we will connect the power electronics. So we'll continue then. So we can see that, let's take a quick look in the, the back of the battery. So these two batteries are going together by a small bulk bar and the positive through the negative main. It's connected through a big bulk bar, which we will see it in just a few moments. But I just want to show you this the um, safety plug connection which finally reaches the positive to the negative pole end of the battery directly connected to the cell in the middle so once you take out the service plug from here you completely disassemble half of the half of the battery so as you open the circuit of course there's not going to be any type of current flowing over here right so we here we see the two main connectors and these two pins over here, it's the interlock safety, which is this that goes directly connecting to the battery management unit to protect the system once you disconnect the service plug. So we'll continue then. Okay, so on the front of the battery, we could say it's almost assembled, all the electronics, the relay, the management control unit. This is the control um, low, coming from the volt, low, um, low voltage system and this all the connections through the high voltage system this remember through all these cables the management unit monitors the voltage and temperature through temperature sensors integrated into the modules and these two grounds over here this circuit is for the isolation monitoring it's the all hybrid vehicles have have um, an electric as an isolation monitor continuously which monitors the if by chance any high voltage current flowing into the chassis, it will detect to these grounds over here connected to the management unit. So it has two circuits. If one comes, the vehicle will still run, but it will trigger a warning. If both of them come, of course, it will shut down everything immediately. <laughs> All right, so we'll continue then. Let's, con let's continue now to assemble this huge boss bars. Okay, so we have over here the positive outlet from the junction plug and the negative outlet the negative inlet and positive inlet for the inverter assembly and let's assemble back this connecting lug or as you call the boss bar right so the bolt little clip and bolts over here continue so we are now in the rear part of the battery and then we're this is the 
monitoring cables for the battery management unit. So remember that the battery, I told you guys that the battery monitors the, I'm sorry, the battery management unit monitors the individual voltage of the cells and temperature. And so, as you can see, these tiny little cables completely covered in orange because it's high voltage what runs over here. So this is how we monitor the high voltage system. These are the signals, okay? And then we are going to assemble now this tiny little bus bar goes in the middle and this big one over here. So let's just, let me just quickly assemble it and we'll continue. So we can say that the high voltage electronics in the back of the battery is fully assembled. All the voltage signal connection, the main large connecting lug and the small. All right. So we will now have to assemble the fan and the unit and we'll continue then. So we just finished to assemble the fan. It only goes with these three large uh, little bolts. Then connect it to this mounting over here. Give me a second. Also this one. And then we can connect our fan. And that's it. So let's just make a quick review. As I said, on the front side of your car, there's a suction vent which connects directly into the battery inlet and there's directly to the cells, as you can see. It goes down, comes to the plastic assembly, then the outlets from this side, which you can see it over here, enters directly the ventilation inside the inverter and the DC to DC converter underneath. And finally, it's been sucked and blowed out from the battery through the fan. This is how the system, the cooling system works in Honda hybrid vehicles. Okay, what do you know? Let's continue then. We're almost done. Well, this is how it looked like. We finally fully assembled. Well, this process just takes uh, probably half an hour, 45 minutes, depending if you really know how it goes. And that's it. We're just ready to put this back in its... Uh, let's see, this under cover over here, isolation cover, and that's it. That should be it. There it is, guy. Fully assembled. So on the force, if your vehicle gets flooded, this is gonna happen. The water is not going anywhere, so I'm sorry to say, but please don't flood your Honda vehicles. All right, so this is all for this episode, guys. I hope you really enjoy it. It was nice showing you all this great information. Um, Hope you guys have a great time. So I'll see you very soon in our next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.